Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Annie Klein, and I am your host this evening. And today, I have a really fun show planned. It's I haven't talked about this before on the show. I don't even think we've gone over this at all in any of the shows, even with Amy. So uh, today, if you are interested in anything that I'm using during the show, make sure to go to the website, jerrysartorama.com, and type in the search bar, today's class code, which is... JL275, so JL275, and it's also down here in the corner in case you need to look at that throughout the show. But that should bring up the teacher's cart with everything I'm using so that you can check it out that way. So today's show, I'm very excited, is talking about repeating patterns. Now, yes, this is something you can do dig digitally. Words. Digitally. I, I think I struggle with that word, just like... Um, Dioxazine, that one. Those are the words I, I just struggle, apparently, with those. But, uh, yes, this is a process that you can actually definitely use um, any kind of, like, digital medium, uh, photo editing software like Procreate or uh, Photoshop or some things that you could use. But for those people who are not very good at those programs or somebody who just doesn't have them because they are a little expensive, how would you approach re doing a repeating pattern by hand? This is something that you could absolutely do by hand. So I wanted to show you kind of the process of how to do that. Um, so I have a couple of different patterns that I wanted to show you kind of how you would set them up and different ways that you can create them. And we're gonna start with a really basic one. So first things first, the uh, kind of more important thing that you need is paper, like a surface. You do not have to use this particular one. I would just highly suggest you use something that is a little bit thicker. Uh, this is a multimedia paper. I very much love it. It is 120 pounds, uh, 200 GSM. So nice and thick. It definitely has, a, you know, kind of denseness to it. The reason why that's really important is because no matter what I put my pattern on with any materials, this paper is going to be pretty good with it. Um, you, I don't think you should really use canvas. If that's something that, I'm not saying that you can't use canvas, I just, not the best option for the surface. Uh, paper is gonna be a little bit better for you. So the 1264 Fabriano is my go-to, the multimedia, it's a really great paper. Um, but that uh, comes in a nine by 12. They can have all kinds of different sizes, but um, I've just been cutting mine down to size, so whether or not it's a nine by nine or an eight by eight in this case, um, you have you know options to cut it down. The way that I do it is always with a straight razor, especially when doing a repeating pattern. I try to make sure I have a perfect square. Uh, and the way that I do that is a cutting mat. Now uh, this has perfect 90 degree, 90 degree squares on the surface. If you want a larger one, if you want to work larger, that'll also help, um, but this also is the way that I cut my paper. I use my flat, uh, the flat edge of my ruler and a razor blade, just like a little hobby knife. Cut perfect edges every time. Uh, now I'm not gonna actually do that during the show, but that is the tools that I would be using in order to do that. All you have to do is measure out your uh, size that you wanna work in, and then just lay that ruler down, make sure you do not let it move, and then cut it nice and straight. So um, for the very first pattern, I'm going to be doing uh, like an eight by eight tile pattern. This is the simplest one. Uh, so if we go to the overhead view, uh, let me actually grab, I'm going to be using a Sharpie for this, honestly, just because it's gonna be very, very easy for you guys to see. And I might actually just keep this down here so you guys can see this a little bit easier. Um, so eight by eight paper. Um, you can tell that it's perfectly square because look at that that sharp edge right there, and if I line that up, it's perfectly squared, lovely. I have also drawn a one inch grid on there, uh, just as a guideline. Uh, when it comes to the tile method, think of this kind of like floor tiles, bathroom tiles, backsplash tiles. Um, you wanna make, it doesn't have to be a perfectly symmetrical kind of design, but um, th this is a, pretty easy way to kind of think of it is kind of like a grid. So um, you can make your design in a lot of different ways, uh, whether it be like triangles, um, but for this one, I'm just gonna keep it 
Very, very simple, right? Smiley. <laughs> Let me actually just put a little circle around it, right? So if I decide that I'm going to do like a checkerboard pattern of little smiley faces, and I do every other one, this is probably gonna actually take me a little bit longer than I want to. Maybe I throw in a fanny face right in the middle. I don't know. Just one. And then keep the rest of them smiley, right? Then after I fill in like every other one, I would take this and actually let me, because there's something I do need to show you. Oop, there's a mouth in there somewhere. All right, not my best smiley face. It's, don't look at him. He's like my bad smiley face. Um, clearly I'm a fine artist. Smileys are on point. Fine artists make mistakes. It's true, fine artists do make mistakes. Um, so with this uh, design, uh, you want to make sure that you have an even number of grids if you do something like this. Uh, the reason why, I'll show you in a minute because, uh, actually I can show you here. So uh, this edge starts the smiley face right here. If I had an even or uh, an odd number of, like if this were a nine by nine, I would also have a smiley face right here. And then when you go to repeat this, because essentially you're just going to take this, have it there, and then repeat it over again, and then tile it around just like you would with tiles in a, a square pattern, um, you're gonna have two smiley faces in your corner. Well, in every corner at that point. So then it's going to have a perfect grid pattern until you get to the edge. So you wanna make sure that your grid is an even number, otherwise that will happen. Do we have any questions on this so far? It's very, very simplistic. Uh, now, uh, I did, Go ahead, and I did a little bit more. See, this is what I was saying. There's your additional ninth layer there. So if I had this heart, it would then repeat back on the other side. So then you'd have the same thing. So if it's an eight by eight, or like an even number, that'll get you to where you can have your heart over here again, and it won't have a weird like repeat. But this is a pattern that I just very quickly drew up. Uh, I wanted to show you this because I wasn't paying attention to my squares when I did this originally. And I drew my design straight off the paper. Don't do that. Uh, you do want to stay within the little grids of those little uh, squares, especially when it comes to your edges. Uh, when you have a pattern like this, the reason why is because that's going to be a sharp edge when you go to repeat it again. Now from here, what you can do is scan it into your computer and you can just start again it would be a photo manipulation software but you can take your hand-drawn imagery and then just tile it over and over and over again um, to make a repeating pattern so how fun is that so you can see like a little chunk of stars is just kind of repeating around question yes um, Rihanna said it, she finds if she does it in that way it repeats with a gap do you have any tips for that um, with that being the case, that's why I'm saying you might want to do it where you just fill in these little squares, uh, and make sure that your design doesn't go to the edge. Um, so yes, there is going to be a gap, but I try to make sure that my design goes to the edge, but not past it, if that makes any sense. Um, and then when you scan it in to your computer, make sure that you can, you can crop it in a little bit and kind of tweak it that way to kind of get rid of those gaps. Um, but if you do the, the work where it's perfectly square paper and you do your design the way that you need to within that square without going over the edge, you should be okay. But the gap is gonna come from like having too much space between your design and the edge on this side. Whereas like if you were to fill in the square entirely in the middle here, like, and I'm talking, um, if I were to very quickly, and I'm not trying to go to the edge, right? But if I do the edge on this one, it 
So this is what I mean, right? This square in just a basic kind of filled in form fills the entire square. This one does not go to the edge. That's gonna leave you a gap. That's the issue. So whether you're drawing a picture or you're just filling in the, the color entirely, you wanna make sure that it either goes completely to the edge, if it's like a filled in thing, or you're consistent with the spacing that you have. Like this is just a little doodle in the center of it. These are just little doodles, but it's in the center of each of those little grids. I hope that makes sense. So that is the very basic tile repeat pattern. Now it gets a little bit more complicated. So this is gonna be where it starts getting a little fun. Now we have a full drop pattern. Um, so I took my little, this is actually nine by nine. So I took my paper and I cut it perfectly in half. When you do these repeat patterns, make sure you are very precise with your cut. That's going to help you later on. You wanna make sure that you're using a ruler to get a perfectly flat edge uh, to cut it with. And then you wanna make sure that it is perfectly in the center. Uh, that's really, really going to help, um, especially when you're doing the more simplistic kind of things. So when you're doing a full drop pattern, um, it does help to number your corners. I hope you guys can see that. All right, so there's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four, right? So when you're doing your patterns on here, you have your four pieces, right? And they're cut in half, and I tape these together to where they're stuck together, but when you start moving them around, these are the numbers, that combinations that you can do where it's going to make sense. So one, two, three, four is where you're always gonna start because this is just how you start your image, right? Then, and actually let me um, keep this on here so that you guys can see it a little bit better. Um, then I'm going to start taking, uh, and you know what? This is where I'm gonna actually start using my little, my, my little doodle images. This is gonna be a lot easier for you guys to see, right? So this is the other aspect of before I get into like how to repeat the pattern. Uh, this is how I make my designs, uh, is by using tracing paper, right? This is our Soho tracing paper. It's literally just tracing paper. Super thin, it's transparent. And yes, I did a little mouse for Christina. It's called a little strawberry and tracing paper does do this. So that's just something that you're gonna have to know. Um, so I do all of my designs and everything on tracing paper and I cut them out. So it's super easy at that point to have a themed amount of doodles and then I can move them around wherever I need to go. So I had decided that I wanted to do kind of like a little forest tea party because it was adorable and why not? So I have my paper all cut up. I have my little design. So there's a little mushroom. There's a little leaf. I got a teapot. Got some more leaves. Um, let's do a snail. I got a teacup over here. And then I definitely have to use my little, my little brat guy, dude. Because he's having a snack, you know. So I can now move these around on here. Adjust them the way that I need to. Because these are pretty large. So I'm going to try and offset them a little bit. With maybe some smaller things in the middle. Something like that, maybe. Actually, you know what? I'm going to... Take those leaves out and give it an acorn. Why not? So my, my all my doodles, they have kind of a theme, you know? Um, I could do fruit. I can do all kinds of things, you know? Superheroes, dinosaurs, whatever makes you happy. Uh, you can do the, the little drawings. They don't have to be super detailed or anything. And then you can cut them out. Move them around. And what you really want to do is make sure you do not go to the edges. At this point in time, you do not want to go to the edges. Um, you want to kind of keep it more towards the center. Now, to make this make sense, I am just going to tape this down, right? Because I'm about to untape everything. Um, my little mouse guy might have to move, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, all right. Sorry. I'm going to shift the mouse guy around. Because I want his tail to go across those two planes, but makes it a little bit easier. Now, um, the other thing I do before I actually set these down, and I can actually do that on here. 
Um, so I've drawn my, my little leaf motif. That's fun to say. My little leaf motif, I've drawn it on my tracing paper and cut it out, right? What I am gonna do before I set it down onto that piece of paper is draw it on the back side as well, just with a simplistic line design. Now, I have the ability to transfer this onto my paper as I lay it down. Um, and it does kind of transfer when you're drawing it too. So, if I get my things kind of set where I want it to. Now the other reason why I draw on both sides of my paper, because A, I want to transfer it down nice and easy. And I was telling this to Katie. <laughs> I don't know why, but every time I do a lot of like little doodles and stuff like this, everything seems to be going one direction. Like everything's pointed this direction, like my mouse is going that way, my snail's going that way, my teapot's going that way. So if I decide that I want something flipped, I don't have to now erase it and redraw it and hope that it's about the same. All I have to do is just one of these. Ta-da! So easy. So let me get this taped down. Nice and simple. Now, if you guys do have any questions, now is a great time to ask it while I'm taping and moving. It's pretty simple though. Uh, I am going to try and keep this sort of over here. Now, if I decide that this is where I'm gonna leave everything, I'm going to transfer it down at this point um, because I don't wanna like take up a ton of time transferring all this down. I'm just gonna take um, my Sharpie and just kind of get a little bit transferred in. All I'm doing is rubbing that down and then it's really, really light, but I can see the tail, right? So I can take, then I can take my pencil and I can go, it goes right about here. Super light. If I really wanted to transfer that down a lot harder, I could. So there's my design, right? It's not my favorite, honestly. Not gonna lie. Not my so, favorite. I feel like this is what you're doing. But hmm. We have a question. Yes. Um, the question is, do you have a solution so you wouldn't have end up with a row of mice straight across? Is that what this is? That is what this is. Okay. So. I have a solution for that, and just hold for that that idea. Okay, that's what I thought. So, but I just wanted to make um, sure. here's here's a better transfer because I had a little bit more um, graphite onto this paper. So, um, transfer your images around. Then you're going to take them and move them. And this is why I wanted to um, really tape down and transfer the the mouse. By the way, I always get this question. The tape that I'm using is the Pro Artist tape. It is amazing and really good to your paper. It doesn't tear it. Cause it's not like a super insane, like really sticky, but it does hold down quite a lot. If you don't have that, is there anything else that you would recommend? I have used the painter's tape, but even that will, like the blue painter's tape will it rip will your paper. Um, yet, pull slow. Yeah, pull slow. Sometimes you might have to apply heat, <laughs> something like that. Um, it's one of those, one of those things. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to very carefully move this back around, right? So you guys can see, I have my four, my four pieces of paper. You can see specifically the top of this little uh, leaf motif, since I still have it, you know, taped. Uh, you can see that the design ends right there, but it picks it back up on this piece. So I transfer that. Same thing with the, the tail. So I still have one, two, three, four, right? Now, if I take the right-hand side, my two and my four, leave that be, and I'm just going to take my one and my three and flip it over here. That's why it's called a full drop, is because you are taking the whole chunk and dropping it in, right? The whole thing, keeping it as is and then moving it around like that. So, 
now I have two, one, four, and three, which is this, right? So the whole thing on this side is now my, my right side became my left side, and this chunk, this one and the three, the whole thing flipped over here. Now, just flip-flopped. Um, so then I can take maybe these mushrooms and put them right in the middle. So it'll continue my, my pattern. And um, as soon as I get that transferred, it's gonna be in that little empty space. So now it's not gonna be awkwardly empty when you repeat your tile pattern again. So the other thing that you can do is the same way. So instead of going from left to right, back and forth, you can go up and down. So for this one, you take the one and the two, and then you drop it underneath the three and the four. So if I did that, hold on, right? So if I were back to the beginning, this is my one, two, three, four. If I were to take my bottom and go up here, now, because remember, my mushroom would be in this corner, because that's where I put my mushroom, I can maybe take my flower and put it right there. So that'll empty or fill up that empty space as well. So then it's going to repeat and it's going to stay in a grid. So that's why this is a linear pattern, which is why I wrote linear here. So everything is going to still kind of end up in a bit of a grid. So your mice, they're gonna line up perfectly within a grid. No matter what you do, it's gonna happen. Um, so that's why I wanted to also show you how to do a half drop pattern. So, same concept, and I'm actually going to, I am going, uh, I didn't transfer too much of this down, so I can keep this going, to be honest. Oh, hold on, backwards. Yes, sorry. So one, two, three, four. Back to the beginning, the way it was. We have a question? Yes, YouTube is wondering if those are original drawings or did you trace them? They're original. They're just little doodles. Like I just, little mushrooms. Now, I mean, that's the, the fun thing is that you can get a post-it note, which is how I work. I get a post-it note, write down a couple different things. So I wrote down a teapot. I wrote down an acorn. I wrote down cookies. I wrote down a, a saucer with a cup. I wrote, wrote down a little mouse. Um, I think I also wrote down a garden gnome. I didn't draw the garden gnome, but there was like a little ladybug, flowers, stuff like that, a theme. I wrote that down. I started looking up like reference images and then just kind of doodled while I was sitting in front of a TV. That was it, you know, nice and easy. Um, but yes, they're all original drawings. All little original doodles. Um, so one, two, three, four, back to the very beginning, right? With a half drop pattern, it's very similar. So your, your two and your four will stay. Then, you're running the three, instead of doing the same full drop, you drop it halfway down. So now it looks kind of like a little Tetris, right? You guys, I love Tetris. Do you not love Tetris? Yes. Then, because of that, this number three that's down here, hanging out, goes up top. So that's the way that it just works the easiest in my head is that the right side shifts over, the one goes down here, the three goes up here. Um, so if we're looking at this, one, two, three, four, right? The two and the four now become your left side. Your one or whatever's in this corner will drop down to this side. And then this one will drop up, drop up, bounce up, jump up, goes up. So now we have, these are the, the four combinations that you can have. So. Your two and your four is now on the left side. There's your two and your four. And then there's your three and your one because your three jumped up, your one dropped down, right? But from here, these, because again, you can then take little designs, pop them in to repeat the pattern. And then when you're done drawing this, you take this, this one goes down here, this one jumps up there, same concept. So now your three and your one become your left side and then your two goes down 
your four jumps up. See? So it just keeps the pattern going. Now when you complete this pattern, and I would transfer all of these, I probably will in a minute, but um, I just wanted to kind of show you a more completed pattern that is already done. So I did the same thing with my fruit. That's what this is. Um, let me actually take all the tape off. That's gonna be a lot easier for you guys to see me moving around. So do you, when you're doing that, do you shift it in all four configurations to make sure you cover all of the gaps or do you just do one and then you fill? So what I do is I do all four with my pencil drawing first. So the way that I had this set up is that everything was in pencil before I locked it in with um, pen. And the pen that I used was just the accurate waterproof technical pen. I used the number one, 1 1.0. So it's a, a thicker nib, because uh, I mostly wanted you guys to be able to see it. <laughs> so one, two, three, four. If this is the half drop pattern, right? My two, my four scoot over and become my left side. My one drops down and my three jumps up. So now you have a banana in the middle, right? And if I keep going, my one and my three shift over, but now my, they're upside down, you know? My two drops down, my four jumps up. So now I have a strawberry in the middle. Isn't it cute? And you can keep going. I my mind. You're scrambling my brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is how you get a design that doesn't go in a perfect grid. It does go in a grid, but the grid is diagonal. So when you're doing uh, patterns like this, it just appears less like a pattern. Like it's, it's still a pattern and your brain recognizes that it's a pattern, but it's not like, oh, it's a pattern. You're just like, oh, okay. Uh, now from here, what you can do is color it in. You can color it in by hand. Uh, that's why I really love this multimedia paper is that you can do it with colored pencils. You can do it with crayons. You can do it with pastels. You can do it with watercolor. You can do it with gouache. I actually, in the teacher's cart, threw in uh, the Turner Acro Gouache, which I might get a chance to paint these. I don't know how much time we're gonna have at the end of this. Um, so the reason why I would suggest, if you're gonna paint this by hand, because again, yes, you can digitally color it, absolutely. Once you scan it in, just scan in the line work and then digitally do that. I'm not going over that process because that's not what we're here for, but I can show you what I did in a minute. Um, but if you do color it in by hand, I would suggest the Turner Coat Wash. The reason why is because it doesn't reactivate once you let it dry, like a traditional gouache would. It has that acrylic polymer, so it stays put like an acrylic paint. Um, but it is flat, matte, really brilliant colors. Um, so this scans into your computer really, really well, and it reproduces gorgeously. So whatever you paint, because you can paint this by hand, and then scan it into your computer, and yes, you are gonna have to paint this, then flip it around, continue to paint. <laughs> now when it comes to patterns like this, um, you can get incredibly complicated, you can get abstract. You can do whatever it is that makes you happy. Me personally, my brain starts going, nope. And I just want to fill in the background with one solid color. That's super easy and not hard for me to do. <laughs> but I can paint in each individual little fruit and uh, make it look the way that I want it to, whether it be really flat colors or kind of have uh, some very simplistic kind of comic style shading. Um, or even make it photorealistic, which would be fun. But the other really cool thing about the Turner Crow Gouache is that you can also draw right on top of it. So it's very mixed media friendly as well. But that is my, um, my half drop pattern with fruit. And before I forget, this is what it looks like colored in. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? So yes, I did digitally color this, mostly because I ran out of time to paint it by hand. My, I might do that later on in the show. Um, <laughs> but um, this is what it could look like. So as you can see, yes, some things line up vertically, but they don't line up 
in a perfect grid, you know? So this one's halfway down. That's why it's called a half drop. So it is still grid and you go, yes, that is a grid, um, but it's less noticeable as a grid and it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Now, the reason why I wanted to make sure to color this in and show you guys what it looks like is because when you are taking a design and shrinking it down into a pattern like this, I wanted to show you one thing that a lot of people forget about. So it's not easy to take this and blow it up and reproduce it into images larger than what you already started out with. When you start doing that, there is a point where yes, you can do that. I can enlarge this from its original size, but once I have this scanned digitally, it can start getting pixelated. So if you want a design, usually it's better to start larger and shrink it down. See, lemon slice, larger lemon slice, right? You can shrink it down and it will retain all of those details and you won't lose kind of that image quality. Now, that being said, when you really start shrinking it down, you lose detail. So for instance, like this little orange, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll hold it up. Hopefully you guys can see that. I put like a little speckle pattern on it and it's really pretty and I really love it. And like my blueberry has some texture to it. My strawberry, you can see like the little highlights and stuff on there. It's really fun. But when you start shrinking things down to a smaller size, you lose detail. So when you know you're going to shrink it down quite significantly, don't make it the most detailed thing in the world because it's gonna start blurring together and you're gonna start losing that image quality. So there's kind of a sweet spot where you can shrink it down to an extent and then you can enlarge it to an extent, but try to stay with that kind of in mind. I, you know, hopefully that makes sense. So any questions so far? The only like pervasive thing is, can you please put the pattern cheat sheets in Jerry's? I knew that was gonna be a thing. So uh, yes, I will be uploading these because this is where it starts getting really complicated. Like the tile one, all you do is just paste it, paste it, like you would like tile on a floor or on your wall, backsplash. That's not complicated. This is where it makes it really confusing. And once you start doing it over time, it starts making sense, especially when you start getting those patterns kind of down onto your paper. I will very much suggest you number the corners of your little tiles. As soon as you make that little tile uh, just put a one, two, three, four into the each corner. That way you can kind of keep track of it without having to think too hard. Because when you start doing patterns, it makes it so confusing until you get used to it or you get your patterns down. Now, that's the half drop pattern, more or less completed. Um, and I did have one last example where I hope this doesn't like hurt people's eyes. <laughs> but it's a little bit more abstract. So you can do funky doodles, you know, um, and this is also the half drop pattern. Let me actually move this around, sorry. I taped everything thinking, oh, I'm not gonna have to untape it. I'm, I'm excited to see this one because there's, that looks like there would be no way that that's gonna match up when you move it around. Right? It does, I swear. All right, so, right, funky, almost like Dr. Seuss land, right? This is something that I used to doodle when I was in high school. This is a half drop pattern. So take my right side, becomes my left side. This one drops down here. Oh wait, hold on. Is this a, no, this isn't a half drop pattern. This is just a repeating pattern. And it goes like that. Or maybe I got it crooked. It might be backwards, I don't know. So it lines up. And then, I don't know if I actually, I might have moved this sideways, yeah. This is how I actually started originally. I drew a splat right in the middle, filled it in, and then started moving these around. Is it, yeah, it goes that way. Sorry, my brain is like 
trying to compute what this is, but this is. <laughs> That's crazy. Isn't that fun? And then this one, is that, nope. This is where my brain starts hurting. Cause I'm like, does that the right? I think it goes like this. Now I did actually scan this into my computer and it does repeat really well. I just, my brain, it just hurts looking at this sometimes. So that's my, my pattern for this one. And so you can get really abstract with it. You could do kind of impressionistic style, which would be really fun. All you have to do is whenever you're creating your pattern, stay within the center, don't go to the edges, and then finish what you're doing. Pencil helps for sure. And then flip it around and repeat it and then get everything set to where you want it and then set it in line. And then you can either then scan it into your computer or physically by hand color this in. So <laughs> now uh, one thing that I did mention in, especially the email blast that went out, is making passive income as an artist with this. So all this being said, we as artists do have to pay bills. That is a, you know, logical thing in life that we have to do as human beings. Um, but it's sometimes hard to do that when you don't have commissions or if you don't have uh, freelance work that's constantly going. Um, so what you can do is make passive income. So stuff like this and stuff like my little fruit design, I can take this now that it's nice and colored and I can digitally upload this to websites like, and we are not affiliated, affiliated FYI. Uh, I can upload this to Redbubble or Spoonflower or uh, what's the other one that I was thinking of the Society other day? Six. Society6. Six. So what those companies do is they take your pattern and they list it for sale. And they will take this pattern and they will apply it to curtains, clothing, pillows, notebooks, uh, all kinds of stuff, really. And us as artists are not responsible for paying for any of those production costs. All I have to do is upload a design. If it starts selling like hotcakes because people love my design, every time it sells, they handle everything production-wise. All they do is send me a check, which is amazing. So I have a feeling that's gonna ha cause a couple of questions. <laughs> Uh, or they were going to want me to uh, write those websites down, which it's, it's a really wonderful way of getting income without having to actively work at it. That's what I mean by passive income. This can make me money without me having to do anything other than make that one design, upload it and send it off. And then the company like uh, Redbubble or Society6 or the Spoonflower that's, so I think they specifically work with like wallpaper. How fun would this be as wallpaper, right? I kind of want it in my kitchen. That'd be great. <laughs> but those companies handle all of the production costs. They handle all of the everything, shipping it out, all that jazz. You get a cut of the profits, which is amazing. So uh, that's why I love this as a kind of an income, passive income type thing for artists. So um, how are we doing on time? I feel like I've really rushed through and I just wanted to make sure I got all the information. Now I can finish this as well since it's, I feel like it was very confusing without having the example <laughs> completely finished. I just really wanted to make sure that I showed you how to move and uh, manipulate your imagery before you actually get it set. So I can keep working on this while we do this. So, um, and this is where uh, that information of how to do this is going to really help. So, once you move things around, I'm going to then take my piece of paper and a fresh piece of tape. Sorry, it's hard to find the end of the tape and get it up. There we go. All right, so the easiest way that I found to tape them back together is to just get the piece of tape kind of started on one. And this is where... It really helps. Let me actually put this on a darker background so you guys can see. All those little uh, pieces of like tracing paper will get everywhere. <laughs> Just fun fact. Uh, this is why it's really, really important to make sure that your cuts are 
very precise because all I have to do now is make sure that it lines up vertically and I push it together as much as I possibly can with no gaps in between and just push my piece of tape down. Now that's taped together, right? And it's nice and flat. So, same thing on this one. And if there are any questions, feel free to pop them in because um, I'm going to be doodling my little mousy, mousy guy up. He's adorable. I mean, I, I got to make this into a pattern for Christina, really, right? Christina, this is for you. All right. So same thing. And if I didn't have those pieces of paper taped to it, it would make this a lot easier. So when it starts bowing like that, because it is kind of bowing just a little bit, um, well, that's probably the mouse tail happening, but um, sometimes that means that your pieces of paper were taped with a little too much, like you pushed it together just a little bit much. Um, it, you shouldn't have any kind of bowing or anything. You just want to make sure that they're, the edges are really touching. I'll take this right in the middle. Again, I'm making sure that middle point is really lined up and then just checking my edges, making sure that they're pushed together. But the middle part of this is really the most important thing. But then everything should line up very nicely. Now, the one last thing I did want to actually tell you guys um, before I forget, you don't have to work in a perfect square. This is a rectangle. It absolutely works the exact same way. Makes it nice and easy. So, Sharpie. All right, so I'm going to probably, I'm gonna leave my little mouse there. I don't, I'm not crazy about this. This is where I love moving these things around, right? So maybe I'll do a big flower there and then my acorn. Again, I don't wanna go to the edges. I just wanna kind of move this around just a little bit. That's already kind of transferred down. Yeah, that's fine. I'll put something here to kind of fill in this, this empty space, right? So I'm going to just use the end of my Sharpie. It doesn't transfer down as great as if I had like a ballpoint pen and redrew this because I'm not really getting every single little detail kind of transferred in, but it works. Right, so I'm getting like my lines transferred. Hopefully with finishing this design, it'll kind of answer those questions you guys had with a visual. Let's get this little ear and it will say when you buff it like this, it does kind of blur it just a little bit. It's okay. Now did I get everything flipped around that I wanted? Yeah, I got my snail going that way. I think I like the teapot going that way. That works. I think my mousy guy is now officially mostly transferred. Again, it's not a perfect transfer when you do it this way. It's okay. But he's there. Look at him. He's so cute. So a viewer on YouTube says, mm -hmm. what I find challenging is the company wants you to create a proof and pay for it, and they provide specifications for sizes as well. Have you bumped up against this? Uh, yes, I have. Now, that's one of those things that the companies, because they take on all of those kind of risks, um, they do, it, it honestly depends on the company too, because every company that you work for, uh, as far as like an online um, like production company that does this, each one's going to have their own rules and everything. Um, so while one might ask for that specifically, another might not. Um, but you do have to remember, like, they're taking on all of the risk, which is kind of worth it, you know? Like, you, all you have to do is upload your design, pay a little bit of money, and then if it sells, like, you, you can really make a good amount of passive income. So as I, I would imagine that if you have a design, like, a really great way of making sure that it's going to be worth it is that you could post it online, say, hey, what do you guys think? Um, put it out there through the world and see if people are really 
interested in the design. Like if they have thoughts on, hey, maybe you sub out that flower for a garden gnome. How adorable would that be? Or, you know, whatever little tweaks. Like I don't really love that color theme. Maybe you change the color theme or have a variety of color options, you know? Because really cool thing about um, putting things into the computer is that if you do know those photo editing softwares, you could very easily tweak this into making it a totally different color. That's something that can be done. Um, again, it's one of those things that if you do it by hand, it's not hard to then send it off and then have it tweaked as well. So that's something that can be done, um, whether or not you send it to somebody else as well. I hope that answers that question. So, my little mouse dude. Okay, he's done. Let me transfer the rest of this little leaf. All right. Again, it gets a little blurry. And you can see like a lot of sketchy lines on this one because I drew the leaves really fast. Didn't draw them that great changed it as I went and then the ones that I transferred onto the back were only the perfect lines that I wanted to transfer. I didn't make them as sketchy which is kind of nice when you work on the transfer paper. All right, let me get some of these lines back in that kind of disappeared just a little bit. Again nothing is set in stone either which is really really great. Yeah I like my little teapot. Uh, I don't know that I want this here though. Like, do I want my tea? This is the this is where you can like totally ask people. Should I put my teapot and my teacup right next to each other, or should I flip it? Should I have my teacup just bouncing away? <laughs> is it going to the right? That's the question. Is this to the right, or is it this way? I kind of want to put it up here. Maybe it goes up here. Right, but if that's the case. You see how close it's getting to the edge? I wouldn't draw this until I change it or until I move things around because it's get awfully close to the edge. But I will remember I want my teacup up there near my mouse, right? So maybe I put a cookie. And the other thing, you don't have to have perfect uh, size. like. My snail, my teapot, awfully close in size. <laughs> uh, that doesn't have to be perfect either, you know. It's really nice. Um, maybe, maybe that and like, hmm. What do we think? Do we like the teapot there and then the leaf, or is that too much leaf? I need help, ladies. Help it. Do we want mushroom? It's a lot of leaf. It's a lot of leaf. Put a mushroom. I kind of like the mushroom. Put a mushroom. But the cool thing is that you can kind of just shift things around. I love that. So easy. Right? We'll put a mushroom here. Now, the other thing I do highly suggest when you do uh, this kind of sort of messy transfer me method, I can talk, I swear. Um, I got graphite all over my fingers. A really good eraser is so important because I got some smudges up here that was around my little mouse down here now and that's okay again it doesn't have to be perfect maybe I put some some grass yeah there's my mushroom and then I'm gonna put my little cookie here It helps if you also have two points of tape. Am I gonna do that right now? Mm -mm. We're just gonna keep going. I've already committed. <laughs> Is that enough my cookie transferred? Yeah, that's good enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. Make sure my little heart gets in there. Is that a perfect heart? Nah. 
that's okay. It's really mostly for like Valentine's Day. It's almost Valentine's Day. In case anybody needed that as a reminder, it's almost Valentine's Day. <laughs> All right, so then let's get my little snail. This might be a little bit of a mess because I flipped them around and there was a lot of sketchy lines, but that's okay. Yeah, there he is. Little snail. Snail buddies. Yeah, this is not perfectly clean lines. Again, my lines and every all my little drawings are not set in stone, so I can clean those up with the, the pen later. All right, so with this teapot, I know I'm gonna need definitely more tape to hold it down, and I don't wanna destroy my drawing. So, get that transferred in enough. I like how this teapot almost looks a little bit like a pumpkin. <laughs> I mean, it's like a forest uh, tea party, so it goes in hand. Right. When you get to a piece of the paper where it's not actually taped down, go towards the edge. It helps you from tearing it. All right, let's see, let's see. That's not perfectly transferred. Good enough, though. I feel like we're going to run out of time, and I don't want to do that. I just want to get it down enough. Yeah, there's my acorn. Oh, yeah, the flower. Forgot about that. Oops. All right, how are we doing on time? I'm trying to get this. Ten minutes? Okay. I think I can get this this design set enough where you guys can really get the idea. All right. Then you guys tell me whether or not you want to see this inked and painted in. Because I feel like I do need to finish this because it's so stinking adorable. is a lot of little lines. Again, something that I could very much just redraw, but not having to draw it, redraw it, erase it, all that makes it a little bit easier. It's not perfect again, but it's there. All right, so I have my mouse, my flower, my acorn, my uh, snail, leaf, cookie, mushroom, and a teapot. So are we doing the half drop, half drop pattern with this? Because I feel like that would be a little bit more satisfying. You ladies tell me. They say yay. All right. Let me get this off. And I'm not going to try and pull into that corner because that might rip it a little bit. That's the other thing with tape is that you don't want to pull into corners like that. All right, so. Oh, you're upside down. Right? One, two, three, four. If it's a half drop, I take my right side, push it over. My one drops down. My three jumps up. So now we have two, three. Four, one, which is right here. Makes it so easy. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of reuse this tape. While you're doing that, can yes. you talk a little bit about how you get it into your software without making um, visible edges? How I get it into my software without making visible edges. So that is a tricky, sort of tricky thing. Um, if you do the work like the pr preliminary work and make sure that everything's nice and perfectly lined up and everything is a perfect square. 
Um, getting it to line up, it shouldn't be a huge issue. Um, that being said, while I just started taping this, I noticed that. You see that, where it's not perfectly lined up? That's gonna be a problem. That's not gonna be fun. So, when you are making your design, if you notice that, that's another reason why I also have these little transfer papers. I can then just make a new template and get on with my life. Um, or I can grab the one that I have down here that's already made. <laughs> um, this is where you start having issues. When you scan it into your computer, after you have like a full design, like if I were to take my fruit one, um, and to be honest, when I scanned my fruit in, let me actually put this over here, there's my last fruit corner, there we go, this guy. So when I scanned this in, I am not going to lie, I think I scanned it, the best way to do it is make sure that you have your image with the most complicated part of it right in the center. That's definitely going to help. Um, so I think I scanned it like this. Um, when I went to go repeat it, I think I had an issue with the top of my strawberry lining up with the other top kind of little bit that was here. Um, just because it didn't quite meet with the scan for some reason. Um, if you're in a hurry, you can digitally make those lines connect. Um, if it's a painting, you can really just take the time to like really tweak it to where it does connect and it does meet. Um, on occasion, you can use tools like the clone tool, the clone stamp, and kind of blur those little like missing bits together. Um, there's a lot of... It honestly is going to depend on the software that you use as well. And it's hard to explain it without physically being in the program. Um, that's, there are a lot of tutorials though. I will say, if you go online and you just look up how to scan and repeat a pattern in Photoshop, that's something that there's a million tutorials for. Um, but like the clone stamp tool and things like that will help you clean up your imagery. Um, and then also being able to like tweak the, the colors digitally. There's, there's a lot of different things. I would just look up a tutorial. There's a lot of visuals. We are visual people. It helps. <laughs> but um, it does on occasion happen. And that's okay. Um, but it's, there's, there's a, a million ways in those programs to fix it. Um, it's just, it's very difficult to say without the program in front of me. <laughs> um, so because I know this is going to be a problem, I am going to make sure to line up, if I don't start over again, I'm going to make sure that this corner, or the, the corners that's going to be right in the center, I'm going to line those up perfectly because I know it's going to be the same thing down here. Like it's going to be slightly offset, but I should fix that before I even get to that point. Um, so it's going to be these corners that are up in the middle. The ones that are kind of meeting right in the center are the most important. Right? Yes, just like that. So then when I put them together, right in the middle, that should line up. This is where it doesn't line up as the outside, but the middle does line up. So that's the most important. I hope that makes sense. All right. And I'm definitely not going to get to painting on this one. <laughs> I was hoping that I would, but I just knew the time was going to fly, and I have a hair in there. It's, don't think it's my hair either. It's not blue. I don't know who that is. Probably me. It's, yeah. Or Christina's. Wait, no, hers is blue too. Hers, <laughs> yes, we have colorful hair around here. Except for Katie. Well, you have colorful hair. It's just not Browns are unnaturally colored. colored. Okay, so my leaf is still matching up nice and perfectly, and then I can just toss in something that I haven't used already. Ooh, mushrooms. I can do that, right? I'm gonna put that right in the center, and then I think I can transfer that. Where is the edge of this tape? Good Lord. I'm gonna transfer this down, move it one more time, 
and then I think we're gonna call it for the day. So if you do have any more questions while I'm doing this, pop your question in. And of course, if you're watching it in the future, I will make sure to try and keep tabs on all the questions that you guys might have. Um, it's a fun little process. Oh, sorry, before, actually, I'm, I'm gonna take all that back. Um, I wanted to, real quick, before I forget, because you might want to do this for screen printing or linoleum printing, like block printing. Uh, it's really, really, really incredibly hard to line this up when you have half of the, like a, a dead edge, like where the, the image kind of goes off. So there is a way of doing this where you create it a little bit different. And let me, I have to tape these back together real fast. While you're doing that, yes. wouldn't it be easier to draw all this on one square and then cut it? Or would it be easier? You have to move them around, remember? So For your first pass, I mean. Yes, for your first pass, like when I did the, um, the fruit, I actually didn't cut it up until I was done drawing them. So yes, you are absolutely correct. That is a little bit easier. And then cut it down the center perfectly. Then move it. Um, I just didn't want to be sitting here cutting paper for 15 minutes on the show. <laughs> it's kind of like watching paint dry. It's really slow going, and I didn't want you guys to be sitting here watching me do that. Although you're watching me tape paper for 90% of this, so my apologies. This is just part of the, the thing. Um, okay, so let me get this lined up, because when it comes to screen printing, it's not easy to line up those edges when they're like that, because this is something that you can use for screen printing, right? So I have my image back together. Now, uh, I am going to chop this up. Don't freak out. So you don't want to have part of your image going off, right? So you're going to take this. It's OK. And then you're going to move this down here. And then you're going to take that, right, to where your image lines up perfectly. So I'm going to tape that. Now, the other really cool thing about this is that this is something that you can do when you paint it. That way you don't have to... Uh, this is one way of kind of avoiding the, the Photoshop misaligned edges as well. Which I cannot believe I almost forgot to tell you this. Right? So now I have a full strawberry, a full uh, pear. My banana is still not perfectly full yet. We'll get to that. But now I know this edge, kind of like, you know, those um, tessellations we did back in the school days? Similar thing. So I chopped it off up here and it's down here, but I now know this edge will meet up perfectly with this edge because it's the same one, right? Same thing over here. I want to make sure that's taped before I cut it though. Because whatever I chop off, it's going to be into two pieces now. And that's not going to be easy, right? Okay. So, again, the same thing. I'm going to actually chop this off into one piece because it's just going to make it a lot easier. Right? I'm going to take this and I'm going to pop it technically down here. Because remember, it's a drop pattern. I know. It's very frustrating. Then I'm going to take my banana and I'm going to pop that up here. So, let me get that leaf lined up. This is where... The other grid pattern it makes it a little bit easier. Um, now I'm going to have to actually tape this up this way because you got to make sure that your lines line up. Something I haven't done in a very long time, so my apologies. Okay, so we want to get my oop, that is funky taped. There we go. Lay it flat. Again, my paper. I taped it a little too close to the edges here, so it started buckling. You want to make sure that you avoid that. So I'm going to take my little leaf right there, line that up perfectly, right? So now my little 
That little chunk of leaf is correct. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to actually, I'm going to just chop it here and put it up here because now this little chunk that's down here is going to line up perfectly here. So it's, it's a really odd shape. I know. That's okay. So this is going to probably line up perfectly on that corner. That's okay. Ooh, taped it to the table. That's not good. All right. So now, if I wanted to, I can paint this really wonky shaped thing and everything is going to line up perfectly. <laughs> Except for this little piece of tape that needs to not be in the way. Right? So once you've painted it then? Mm hmm Would you you can still scan this it into a square to scan it? At that point, no. I probably would just paint uh, paint this, scan it into my computer, and it should still line up. So like this like wonky edge should line up down here. This little like weird square thing that I have going on is gonna line up up here. See like this right here? That is perfectly mimicked over here. <laughs> It is still just like the tessellation and it'll still repeat. It's just because it's that half drop, it will halfway drop down. But now every single piece of my fruit is whole and I can paint it like this. I can then take this and turn it also into a screen print and it will still pat, uh, repeat just like it should as well. Um, but this is my whole design just in a very funky shape. So this is one way of kind of getting around it. Same thing with the linoleum block is that you can cut your block to kind of be the same funky shape of whatever it may be. Um, and then you can print it that way. Now it doesn't have to be this crazy funky because of all the like weird little bits. Um, that's mostly just me being in a rush. <laughs> but I hope that makes sense. So then this can be used for all kinds of things. I feel like I just caused like 27 more questions. Yes. No? Okay, good. <laughs> I just like, I wanna make sure that this isn't massively confusing. Um, and I know it is a, it's a weird, funky process, but it's really fun, very satisfying, and I hope you guys get a chance to try it. Uh, and if you do, just like I'm going to be dropping these into the uh, Jerry's Live Facebook group for you guys to have as a reference, um, you can also take your designs and drop them in and say, hey guys, check out what I made and make sure you do the hashtag JL275 because I would love to find what you make and love to see your, your repeat patterns, especially if they're amazing and I can and love to see your, your repeat patterns, especially if they're amazing and I can get them on a throw pillow. Why not? Shower curtains, baseball hat. There's all kinds of things. Cell phone cases. They make cell phone cases now. And I really want somebody to make a dinosaur themed like wallpaper that I want to put on my kitchen because I'm that person <laughs> or maybe I make it but I hope you guys enjoyed this show that was repeat patterns and how to kind of get the different kind of uh, ways to get them to repeat uh, where it doesn't look like a strict grid so I hope that made sense <laughs> if you have any questions though in the future do put them in the chats I will always make sure to check them out and answer you guys as they come in and make sure you also uh, join me next week. It is Valentine's Day. We are gonna be here for Valentine's Day. And I'm going to be painting a fun faceted gem. And yes, it is a little heart gem. How cute is that? So I'm gonna be painting this guy next week to where I can show you guys how to paint faceted gems. It's just gonna be red and a heart for Valentine's Day. So. Also, hint, hint, get um, Valentine's Day present if you haven't gotten it now. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Bye.